Now let's move on to discuss the functional unit of the kidneys, the nephron, including the renal corpuscle, the nephron loop or loop of Henle, and glomerular filtration. The structure of the nephron. The afferent arteriole brings blood into the glomerulus for filtering. The efferent arteriole removes filtered blood. The renal corpuscle and Bowman's capsule interact with the glomerulus for filtering and producing filtrate. The filtrate leaves this area and travels through the proximal convoluted tubule and eventually into the thin descending loop. Next, the thick ascending loop, which gives rise to the distal convoluted tubule. The filtrate then enters the collecting ducts. The nephrons are tubular structures and are the functional unit of the kidneys. There are over 1 million nephrons in each kidney. They all drain towards the center of the kidney into the collecting duct system. The nephron performs almost all of the kidney's functions, including the reabsorption and secretion of certain solutes and ions. Nephrons can be classified into two groups juxtamedullary apparatus, which extend into the medulla region of the kidney, and cortical nephrons, which do not extend into the medulla. The filtration of blood takes place at the glomerulus. Blood is continually filtered within Bowman's capsule. Wastes and other solutes are passed into the tubule for inclusion into the urine, while larger items such as cells and proteins are retained in the blood. Blood flows into the kidney at the renal artery. The renal artery branches into several afferent arterioles. Each afferent arteriole subdivides into a network of capillaries called a glomerulus. The capillaries merge into an efferent arteriole, and then this divides into a meshwork of capillaries called the vasa recta. The vasa recta converge at the renal vein and blood flows out of the kidney. The functional processes performed by the nephrons include filtration and reabsorption, secretion, and excretion. Filtration in the kidney refers to the movement of substances from the glomerular capillary into the nephron. This is due to the pressure exerted by the blood entering Bowman's capsule. This forces water and dissolved components through the glomerulus to form filtrate. As we mentioned, proteins and cells are too large to filter whereas glucose, water, and sodium are filtered through the pores into the nephrons. Reabsorption in the nephrons. Reabsorption is the process whereby the filtrate produced in the glomerulus is reabsorbed through the renal tubule. Approximately 99% of all the filtrate is reabsorbed, and this includes water, sodium, glucose, and magnesium, for example. The reabsorption process is specific to the changing needs of the body. Certain diseases can affect what's known as tubular maxima. For example, in uncontrolled diabetes, higher than normal blood glucose levels occur. This leads to greater than normal glucose being filtered in the glomerulus. Therefore, the glucose levels in the nephron exceed the tubular maximum, that's the maximum reabsorption rate and this causes glucose to be excreted out of the body in the urine. The excreted glucose can be easily detected on urine test strips. The nephrons also perform the functional processes of secretion and excretion. Tubular secretion performs the opposite function of reabsorption. Specifically, it adds material to the filtrate from the bloodstream. These materials are usually unwanted substances, such as hydrogen ions and toxins, as well as urea. Excretion is the elimination of urine from the body. Urine formation actually begins with filtrate formation in the glomerulus. A total of approximately 180 liters per day is filtered. Next, approximately 99% of that filtrate is reabsorbed. The filtrate to be excreted as urine is transported 
through the minor and major calyx and the renal pelvis into the ureters and bladder to be eventually eliminated through the urethra. Let's discuss each component of the nephron in more detail. The high pressure within the glomerulus allows small solutes and water to escape from the glomerular blood flow into the space of Bowman's capsule. The proximal tubule is responsible for reabsorption. Normally, 100% of the filtered glucose is reabsorbed. The proximal tubule contains epithelial cells with microvilli which increase the surface area for reabsorption. This fluid in the proximal tubule is isotonic compared to plasma. The nephron loop or loop of Henle. The nephron loop can be divided into two functional regions, the descending limb and the ascending limb. In the descending limb, fluid travels down the descending limb towards the medulla region of the kidney. Water moves out of the descending limb, resulting in hyperosmotic fluid. In the ascending limb, fluid travels towards the cortex of the kidney. And in this region of the nephron, sodium and chloride are actively transported out of the limb. This leads to dilute or hypoosmotic fluid, which then enters the collecting tubule. Processes used by the kidneys to concentrate urine. When there are no hormones released for reabsorption, a large volume of dilute urine is produced. This occurs by the nephron containing dilute fluid after the ascending limb. This then proceeds out of the kidney for excretion. During times of low water intake, the kidneys can conserve water by increasing the volume of reabsorbed fluid. This is accomplished by the countercurrent mechanism. The countercurrent mechanism establishes an osmolarity gradient in which the osmolarity increases from the cortex towards the medulla of the kidney. The maximum osmolarity is 1200 milliosmoles, and this occurs in the loop of Henle. Then, as the filtrate passes through the collecting tubule, water moves out of the interstitial fluid space and eventually is returned to the rest of the body. The composition of urine. Urine is a highly regulated fluid. It's normally bright yellow and made up of the following components. 95% or more water, sodium, potassium, sulfur, hydrogen ions, urea, creatinine, and ammonia. Normally, the urine should not contain glucose, proteins, or red blood cells. Proteins in red blood cells are normally too large to leave the glomerular blood flow. Tubular reabsorption of molecules and ions can occur at a maximum rate. The protein mechanisms involved in reabsorbing a molecule, such as glucose, can only reabsorb glucose at a certain amount per unit of time. If the blood concentration is too high, some fraction of that glucose will be excreted out of the body. In uncontrolled diabetes, for example, excess glucose in the bloodstream will lead to glucose being excreted in the urine. A simple urine test is known as a urinalysis. This is a common test used in the doctor's office as part of a yearly physical or if a problem is suspected in a patient. A urinalysis tests for electrolyte levels as well as the presence of proteins, glucose, blood cells, bacteria, and immune cells. This test, along with others, can be used to assess the overall kidney function. 